friends welcome back to series of online lectures on corporate governance in this session we shall be studying about Naresh Chandra Committee report 2002 learning objectives to analyze the recommendations of Naresh Chandra report 2002 the Naresh Chandra committee was appointed as I level committee to examine various corporate governance issues by the Department of Company Affairs on 21st August 2002. The Naresh Chandra Committee has recommended the following recommendations. Nomination Committee Every corporation should have nomination committee. Good boards have nomination committee typically comprising entirely of independent directors with the committee chairman being an independent director. The director as decides the skill sets that are needed and keeping in mind the present and desired composition and specialized oversight needs of the company in the foreseeable future. The nomination committee then takes up the task of searching such directors entire through its own network of contacts or by formal search process with the help of external consultants. If a company needed a director, it gives advertisements in newspapers or on TV channels. They are looking for so and so directors, direction positions needs to be fulfilled. After getting the applications, they go into thorough details of the CVs, then discussed in the full board and final candidates is recommended to the chairman of the board. The chairman then gets in touch with the selected people and invites them to join the board as a additional directors after which their appointment is sought to ratify by the shareholders in the next shareholders meeting. Letter of appointment to directors the listed companies should issue a formal letters of appointment to the non-executive directors and independent directors. Just as it is does in appointment appointing employees and executive directors. 
mandatory recommendations or audit committee audit committee clause 49 of the listing agreement contains detailed mandatory provisions for audit committee of the board even so it has one flaw that needs to be immediately rectified in the earlier version of uh, listing clause 49 only non executive directors could be member of the audit committee the revised clause after rectification of the uh, clause 49 uh, omitted this requirement under the present administration two third of the members of the audit uh, committee must be independent directors as must the chairman but the rest may be either the non-executive directors or executive directors this is a clearly a mistake and a, then say counter to the fundamental operations principles of good governance the next recommendation in the audit committee the auditor should thoroughly examine financial statements such as profit and loss account balance sheet cash flow statements etc fixed contractual remuneration companies have the options of giving fixed contractual remuneration to the non executive directors or independent directors the remuneration which is not linked to the net profit therefore the companies should be given the option to choose what the option of the remuneration remuneration committee of the board the remuneration committee should comprise at least three members majority of whom it should be independent directors it should have delegated the responsibility for setting the remuneration for all executive directors and executive chairman including any compensation payments such as retirement benefits or stock options should also recommend the monitor recommend and monitor the level and structure of pay for senior management the remuneration committee should take available its terms of reference its role the authority delegated to it by the board and it has done for the year under the review to the shareholders in a separate section of, of the chapter corporate corporate governance in the annual report audit committee of the board in its present form clause 49 of the listing agreement contains a detailed mandatory provisions for the audit committee of the board even so it has the flaw that needs to immediately ret rectify in the earlier version of the class 49 only non-executive directors could uh, be the members of audit committee separation of the offices of uh, chairman and uh, the chief executive officer the task force 
deliberated at length on whether it is desirable to separate the offices of the chairman of publicly listed company from that of the CEO. While it was observed that there is no obvious casualty between such separation and a better corporate governance, it was nevertheless true that there is a growing trend internationally of separating of offices of the chairman and CEO. It is the dominant practice in the UK, increasingly so throughout the continental Europe and even the USA which has had the long tradition of having the same person as chairman and CEO. These are all the recommendations given by the Naresh Chandra Committee. Thank you and happy learning.